all the mentors that, that do this, when you talk to them, they say they get far more out of it than the kids. And the kids and the parents get a lot, so you're going to really get a lot. You will bond with those kids on the very first event. You want to talk to them on their level. You want to, first, first thing I did was I sat down on the floor so I could be right down there with the kids because they're three and four year olds. After that, I was home free. Every time I walked into the classroom, they would all yell, Mr. Shule, Mr. Shule, and they would come running and you'd get three or four kids grabbing your legs. So if you like that, you're in the right place. <laughs> and um, yeah, you read the book, you think about it before you get in there. Talk, you know, like she said, talk about yourself when you were that age or when you were five or six or when you had a bike and what color it was and what color is your, you know, do you have bikes? And they'll, believe you me, they'll interact with you. So it's just not about reading the story, it's about questioning the kids, exp expanding on whatever they say, and you will laugh and smile, and the teacher will laugh and smile, and, and you will have a good time. Be prepared. Be prepared when you come to the classroom. Um, work with your, your mentor guide, but also be comfortable with the book as well. Um, when you arrive to the classroom, uh, let the children know that you're, you're happy to be there with them, and also let them know that it's but this is a time, an important time, to be able to share and also uh, share uh, their experiences. We want this to be an opportunity for that as well. Be expressive, be animated if you can. Children love that. They love it when you're animated, when you're expressive. They're gonna love that. Uh, allow them the opportunity to laugh. Allow them an opportunity to ask questions. You want them to raise their hand because it, this process here is a, an interactive process. We want, we want children to participate. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I, this is our first book here, and I want to provide some tips on that. Our first book here, usually with the, with the children, and I'll do a short demonstration here. Usually with the children, uh, there's a, for every book that you read, and there'll, there'll be several books, you want to do an introduction to the child, okay? Usually how I started off with the children, like Jim says, one, you know, one of the one of the opportunities with these children, you want, you want an icebreaker. When you when you come in, usually when I come in, I you know, you, don't be afraid to sing. Old McDonald's a popular song among the children, and so when I come in, I usually ask them, hey, hey what song would you like to sing? And they'll either say Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or Old McDonald, and then we'll we'll kind of break the ice with that. Later, I will tell them, you know, we have a, a book that I like for you to read. And so there's the, the introduction part of this, of the book. Uh, so what, what you want to do is I'll have the, you know, what that involves is that, you know, you may want to tell them a little bit about the book. Again, look at your, you can look at your mentor card there, and it talks a little bit about the book, but you can provide them some information, but don't give them all the de details. You want to kind of reel them in a little bit, right? Um, then you want to go ahead and talk about essential things uh, about the book. For example, uh, introduce the title of the book and kids love when you when you run your your finger across text like that they love it introduce the title introduce the author the uh, the illustrator but don't be afraid to ask questions what is an illustrator you'd be surprised the kids love that you want to talk about the different parts of the books that's what I normally do and I'll ask them hey so what is this here and they'll like oh that's the front cover uh, what's this the back cover this the spine and so next time you know you go in and read again, you may want to mix it up a little bit and say, "Hey, so the pages that hold together the book, what is that? The spine." So introducing the book is a, a great way of getting the kid um, involved, the, the child uh, ready for the read. <coughs> like Mr. Schul says, uh, a lot of the children will have already had this preparation and been introduced to the book. So you can, they're going to have a lot of questions. One of the things that they like, you know, sometimes I just hold the book up and say, hey, wow, I wonder what's going on here. And so you may want to ask questions about what, what the child, what the book may be about. And that, that really, um, you know, just, just stirs conversation, interaction. When you read the book, will it be the first time the children hear the story? No, they would they have heard They've the already heard it. They would have heard okay. the story. Okay, and so when I, when I first start off, I normally usually go into and ask the children, hey, can you help me find the first page? Is this the first page? No, this is not the first page. Is this the first page? No. And so we end up getting to the first page, okay? So as the story goes, we'll go ahead and I'm gonna do a little demo here and I'm gonna take my glasses off. 
again, you want, you want to have some facial expressions. You want to use different voices for different characters. Kids love that. They love it when you use the different voices. Also, what I usually do is I, if I see some words in there that I think may, maybe I, I want to uh, emphasize, I will, I will do that. And what that does is that helps build vocabulary for, for our children. So with that said, let me go ahead and get started here. Okay. Gerald was a tall giraffe. Whose, whose neck was long and slim. His knees were awfully crooked and his big legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. What I would do here, sir, what I would do at this point with shoots, I would mention, children, this is shoots. Can you all say that with me? Shoots. Shoots. Exactly. Helping to build the vocabulary of, of the children's words there. Uh, the mentor guy says at this point you want to stop. There's an opportunity for interaction if you look at your mentor guy. And he'll say, I wonder what's going on here. I wonder what, how Gerald feels about himself. Is there anything on this page that can indicate what, how Gerald feels about himself? Moving on to the next page. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance, where every single animal turns up to skip and <coughs> plants. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very sad. The mentor guide says, you would stop at this page, and this is an opportunity for interaction for the children. Why is Gerald so sad? How would you feel? is one of the questions that are mentioned in the mentor guide. So there's opportunity for interaction, discussing as you go through the book. Another thing, if we want to help our children identify rhyming words, I would go, dance. What does dance rhyme with? Prance. Probably a lot of kids would say prance. Moving on. The warthog started waltzing, and the rhinos rock and roll. The lions danced the tango that was elegant and bold. And when occasionally showed, encourage the children to read, to look at the pictures, so they'll know what is going on. They can, as they hear, they're also seeing as well. I would mention, does anybody know what bold means? I'm sure it would get a lot of hands on that. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel, and eight baboons then teamed up with the splintered Scottish regal to throw in accents, they love it. Jared, Jared swallowed bravely. He walked toward the floor, but the lion saw him coming and they soon began to roar. You want to be expressive when there's opportunities like words like roar, roar. And have it and ask the children, would you like to roar with me? And you'd be surprised with what response you'll get. Oh, no, yeah. Roar. I like that. <laughs> hey, look at clumsy Gerald. The animals all sneered. G uh, giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He rooted to the spot. You're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel such a clock. So he crept off from the dance floor, and he started walking home. He never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing, and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Kids love this, watch this. Excuse me, called the cricket, who'd seen Gerald early on. But sometimes when you're different, you just read a different song. Sometimes you can scare them. Sometimes they'll, they'll, they just love that though, when you use different voices. <laughs> listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that lovely moon is praying just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled, picked up his violin, then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying, and his tail was swished around. 
He threw his arms out sideways. He swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leaped up in the air. I would stop at this point and I would ask the kids, hey, what do you think is going on here? What do you think happens next? Kids love that. What happens next? You'll get a lot of hands raising up. And surely one of the kids will say, he's dancing. Just affirm that. Children felt so, I mean, Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth opened wide. I'm dancing. I'm dancing. Yes, I'm dancing, Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entrance. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we've ever, ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. So I hope these tips were helpful. I know I may at times look a little obnoxious right here, but I tell you what, the kids love it. When you're animated, when, you're, when you have expression, you get an opportunity to, to, to just to, you know, just be animated. And, and facial expressions are very important.